Oh, hi there. Uh, I just got a message from a Gregory Your Travel Buddy Sneed. And he said, hey Naomi, your tutorials are top shelf. Well, Gregory, I really appreciate that. And I hope to keep doing them for you. Uh, let's see, what did he want to know? Oh, he wants to know, how do I do a fancy Star Trek beam out a sequence of a busy city mom or dad and staring into their phone and tapping the their phone and beaming out then into a travel shot of being on a beach or on a cruise ship with a bunch of kids and he actually said help so well Gregory I'm not on a beach and obviously I'm not on a cruise ship somehow I beamed myself to a very noisy place I honestly it was quiet when I set this all up so I'm going to show you how you can do this in Camtasia and you probably will need PowerPoint and and or Photoshop one or the other or some similar software to uh, do a little tiny uh, masking type thing and let's go ahead and go back to the office to see how to do this oh before we do that actually let's go ahead and go over a little bit about what you need to do to set it up to really kind of sell the uh, idea of beaming out from one place to the other Okay, let's see what you will need. You will need, obviously, your camera. You will need your cell phone for the type of shot that you're looking to do. You will need, uh, optionally, but you should have a tape measure. It'll just help things a lot easier for you uh, in setting up the uh, second location shot. You will need tape, painter's tape, whatever, gaffer's tape, whatever type of tape you uh, have. If you don't have tape, then a couple sticks, anything that will help you mark your place. And you will need a pen. And then, most important, you'll need a sheet of paper or a book, whatever you use, that will give you the, write down all your B-rolls and your shots that you want and all the equipment that you need. There's nothing going to be nothing worse than being on the beach or being on the cruise ship, doing everything, and then all of a sudden getting home and realizing, oh my gosh, I didn't get that shot, or I meant to do this, that, or the other thing. So if it's all written down, then you're in good shape. And you're also going to be wanting to write down what your film speed and your aperture and your ISO is. So let's go ahead and, whoops, let's go. That was just my, uh, that was just my tape measure and my sticks. Nothing broken. Okay, here we are back at the office in Camtasia 9. Now before we start learning how to create this transportation effect, a very quick reminder, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything, especially if you are someone who likes an eclectic selection of training videos from Camtasia and so much more. Okay, the first thing to do in Camtasia is save your project. You know what I say, save, save, save all the time. Click on File, Save As. Then in the location you want to save the file, give it a name. We'll call this Beaming Up Scotty and click on Save or hit Enter. Now let's click on Import Media and pull in the recording of our first location by double clicking on it, which will put it automatically in the Media Bin section. Right click on the thumbnail and select Add to Timeline at Playhead. Clicking on the red bumper bar of the playhead, I'm going to move it to the right to highlight the section I want to remove, right before I come on camera. Then I'll click on Ctrl plus X to cut that section of the recording, since I will not be using it. It moves everything to the left. Let me expand this timeline by clicking on the Ctrl plus Shift plus Equal key, or you can click on this plus sign here. Also, to make the audio slightly easier to see, I'm going to increase the height of this track by moving my cursor to the top of the track until it turns into a double arrow. Then I'll click and hold while dragging it up. Now let me scrub the playhead forward to where I'm tapping the phone. What I want to do is capture one frame from where I finish the word tapping. To do this, I'll first watch and listen to the audio waveform to see where the word tapping ends and place a marker there by clicking on Shift plus M. I'll then click on the Shift key and press the period key, which moves and highlights one frame at a time, 
or one step at a time. Now I'll place my cursor over the highlighted area, right click with my mouse key, and select Produce Timeline Selection As. Make sure it is selected as Custom Production Settings, then click on Next. Click on the GIF animation file and Next. You can keep everything at its default here and click on Next. Click on Next again, and Next again, and Next one more time. For this production line, I'm going to add the words GIF still and select the folder of where I want this image to be saved. Then click on Finish. I'll close out of this preview window and click on Finish. Now our next step needs to be done in either Photoshop or PowerPoint, whichever you are more comfortable with. I'll demonstrate both, starting with Photoshop, but if you want to skip directly to the instructions for PowerPoint, then go to this time frame in the video. In Photoshop, open the GIF file you just saved by pressing Ctrl plus O, double click on it to open it. Now go to Image, Mode, and change from Index Color to RGB Color. Now grab the Quick Selection tool here. Make sure you have the Quick Selection tool active. Move your cursor over the person and hold your left mouse key down as you drag around the body to select it. If you select too much, then hold your Alt key down, which turns your brush into a minus sign to remove the parts where you went too far. It doesn't have to be perfect, but make sure you do have all the body selected and not much of the surrounding area. Make sure your layer is highlighted and press Ctrl plus J to make a separate copy of the body. Now right click on the layer you just created and select Quick Export as PNG and save the image in the same folder as the original. To skip forward to complete the Camtasia training, go to this time frame in the video. Now let's look at how to do this in PowerPoint. Double click on the blank presentation to open, then click on the Layout drop down arrow and select Blank. Click on Insert and Pictures and find the image you saved as a GIF. Double click on it to insert it onto the canvas. Let's click on Remove Background. You will see PowerPoint does a good portion of the work for you. We'll click on the green icon to select the areas we want to keep. We select the red icon to select the areas we want to remove. You'll see whichever brush you are using, that will be the color on the canvas. So you know green you are keeping and red you are removing. As in Photoshop, what you want to try to do is get all of the body and none of the background, or as little as possible of the background. Once you have everything you want to keep, you can either click on the outside of the canvas, or you can click on Keep Changes. Now right-click on the image and select Save Picture As, and save in the same folder as the original image. Let's go back to Camtasia and really get into creating this Beam Me Up Scotty transporter effect. Let's make sure our playhead is right at the marker we had set earlier. We'll click on the plus sign in the media bin to import media and go to where we saved our transparent background image of the person. Right click on the image and select add to timeline at playhead. Let's pull this down a little to enlarge the canvas area and lock track 1 for now. Then go back up to line up the still image on track 2 with the image on track 1. I can line it up if I have to in small steps using my right, left, down, or up arrow keys. To make sure I've got it perfectly lined up, I'll zoom in to 100% or larger and take a quick look and make any adjustments. Okay, everything looks good now. Let's go ahead, put our cursor over the name Track 1 on the left side, and right click, then select Insert Track and Above. Let's add some B-roll we did only of the landscape. Now here's a point. If you are working in filtered light that keeps changing, it could be hard to match up. Do your landscape B-roll right at the time you're doing your scene for ease of matching, which was a mistake I originally made. My B-roll was, time-wise, done much later. So let's go ahead and get rid of that because fortunately, I did have about four seconds of landscape at the end of this clip, which is really all we need. I'll scrub with my playhead to the section where I'm not in frame and click and hold the left mouse key down on the red bumper of the playhead, highlighting to the end of the clip. Then I'll press Ctrl plus C to copy. You can also copy by clicking on this copy icon. I'll then double click on the playhead to make both bumpers connect to the playhead. I can quickly move my playhead to the previous marker by using the shortcut key Ctrl plus the left bracket key. 
Now I'll press Ctrl plus V to paste what I had copied at the playhead. Or I could click on the paste icon here. I'll move this to the track underneath the still image and make it exactly four seconds long by clicking on the end of the landscape clip and dragging it to the left until it says four seconds. I can now split track three and track one and remove the ends as I won't need these. I'll move the cursor to the end of the B-roll landscape clip and highlight all overhanging clips, then press S to split them, or you could use the split icon here. I'll then press my delete key to remove it. Since the marker indicates where the transportation will start, I don't need the audio from here to here. I'll highlight track one by clicking on it. I'll then do an easy highlight keystroke shortcut. Since I have the marker as a destination, I'll press Ctrl plus Shift plus the left bracket key. This highlights from where the playhead is currently to the previous marker. I'll click on the Audio Properties icon to make sure the audio green line shows. Then click and hold the line with the mouse, dragging it down to zero. It will mute all the audio in this section. I want this to happen immediately on the marker, so I'll adjust the left audio points slightly. Now the first thing I want to adjust is how the landscape goes from the first clip to my B-roll. There's a slight jump since the background leaves are moving. To fix this so it is less obvious, I'll go to Transitions and add a fade transition of one second to the beginning of the landscape B-roll. If we played it a little, you'll see it's barely noticeable. Now here comes the first part of the Beam Me Up Scotty transporter effect. First we'll scroll down the transitions and select Pixelate and add it to the still image of the Beam Me Up Scotty clip. Whoops, we added it to the front and back of the clip, which we don't want. That's an easy fix. Just highlight the left transition, right click it, and select Delete. We'll now expand the right transition by highlighting it and holding our left mouse key down on the edge, moving it all the way to the left. Let's move this up a little so we can see some more tracks. We move the playhead to the beginning of the clip, highlight the clip to make sure it is selected, then Ctrl plus C to copy it and Ctrl plus V to paste at the playhead on the top track. We'll highlight both the track three and four and press Ctrl plus G to group them. Or you could put your cursor right here above the transition, right click while they are both highlighted and select group. Open the group and delete one of the clips since it's not needed. We are now going to select the glow transition and add it to the group. We'll delete the left transition, highlight and drag the right transition to the left until it is just slightly over the transition on track two. By holding your control key down as you expand to the left, your playhead will not stop abruptly with the transition below. Now all we have to do is add audio to help sell the effect. Let's go back to our media bin, click on the plus sign and import media. I found a great Creative Commons CCO sound effect on freesound.org and have provided the link to the audio below for your use. I'll double click on the audio to add it to the media bin, then drag it down to the marker on track four. I want it actually to start a few milliseconds before the transition. I'll expand the tracks, then hold my control key down and move the audio to the left ever so slightly. I want the sound to fade in, so I'll go to the audio effects and drag the fade in effect onto the audio soundtrack. I'll then adjust the audio points to where I want them, which is right where both transitions start working together. Now we are going to do the beam me down, Scotty, effect the same exact way I just demonstrated, but the transportation effects will be slightly different. Let's take a quick look at that. We'll move the still image to the right slightly so it is not bumping up against anything, then drag and drop the pixelate transition to the beginning of the clip. We'll slide the clip to the left and expand the pixelate transition to three seconds. Then press Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste the clip. We need to add an extra track, so put your cursor on track three, right click and select insert track above. We'll then move this down and group the clips together. 
open the group, and remove one of the images. We'll now add the glow transition to the group clip and expand it to the full four seconds. Right click on a blank track and select Remove All Empty Tracks. Now unlock track four and go to the audio effects and drag the fade out effect to the track. I think I actually want to start the audio a little quieter. So I'm going to put an audio marker here by double clicking on the audio line and then adjusting the volume by moving this audio point down. Okay, now as you can see, we need to adjust the bottom track so the audio and visual match up. I'll want to expand one frame up to where the landscape fade ends. I'll lock all tracks and unlock track one. I'll move my cursor to the start of the clip and make sure it is highlighted. Holding my shift key down, I'll press the period key to move the red playhead bumper to the right one frame. Then I'll press shift plus E to expand the frame and put in the number four since I want it to be about four seconds. Now let's test how that looks. Okay, I want to cut just a tiny section so it completely lines up. I'll put the playhead right over the end of the extended frame. I'll use my comma key to step it to the left right over the stitch mark. I'll click and hold on the green bumper of the playhead and move it to the left until it bumps up against the other clips. I'll then press Ctrl plus X to remove the section and take a quick look. And let's look at the full effect. Perfect. There you have it, Gregory, your travel buddy Sneed. I hope this comes very close to the beam me up Scotty effect you were looking for. If you have a question and would like me to create a Camtasia tutorial video for you, simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. As always, this is Naomi with TopShelfVA.com. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day!